What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Grid Penalty, the Formula One podcast for everybody. And today, we mean everybody, all sorts of racing fans. <laughs> we got a hell of a show for you today. My name is Brent Gill. With me, as always, is Jeff Tice. Uh, we're talking uh, IndyCar. I was at the IndyCar Grand Prix in Long Beach this weekend. Then we're going to touch on some Formula One stuff and their updates coming up for this weekend's race. Uh, but before we get into our episode... Jeff, what do we got to do? We got to get plugged. Plug! Let's get plugged. <laughs> What's up, everyone? That's never uh, not fun. <laughs> it's the most fun. It's good to be here. I'm glad you made it through the weekend in Long Beach. Uh, you can find me all over the place at Jeffrey Tice on all social media, G-E-O-F-F-R-E-Y-T-I-C-E. I also have some dates coming up uh, this weekend. And by this weekend, I mean not this weekend, next weekend. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> which is actual race weekend. We don't have a race this week. We still have to wait one more week till. Fuck, we don't Fox have a race week. this Sunday? No, dude. I thought it was race week, and then it's not. And so oh, you're right. One more God week of just hopefully waiting for Bottas to show his butt somewhere around the world. Yeah, for real. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you can find me next week. Uh, I will be in the Midwest. I'm going with Josh Blue. We're going to be in... The Milwaukee Improv, we're going to be one night, and then the next night we're going to be in McHenry, uh, Illinois. And then you said McHenry? McHenry, Illinois. I think that's the third night. Second night, I think we're going to uh, somewhere in Indi- Hobart, in Indiana. So <laughs> catch us in the Midwest. <laughs> the names of these towns are at, priceless. Uh, we're going to be at Culver's. We're going to be at local bars. <laughs> we're going to be... Raising canes. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be doing shots of Malort. We're going full Midwest. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm so excited. The shows will be amazing. All the shows in the Midwest are always fun. Uh, the people are great. So come out, support those shows. I'll be opening up uh, for the great Josh Blue. And then uh, also buy my book. Uh, or don't. It's fine. But it's a little children's book if you have a, a child. It's called The Eleven Evelyns. Look at that. There you go. Uh, on camera. The Evelyns. Yeah. I gotta it, stop saying that. The Eleven Evelyns. It's oh, so good. <laughs> it's on Amazon. Uh, check it out. It's just a children's book that I wrote and illustrated for my daughter. So if you're into that, if you have kids, if you know a kid, um, I mean, make sure you definitely know them personally. Don't just go give it to kids. That's wild. <laughs> you go, you go uh, to a park. <laughs> hey, kid. Yeah. You guys you like, like books? books? <laughs> like, right. yeah. Let's get them out of here. So that's great. And then uh, let's say you are at a playground and you're harassing children. What you're going to want to do is immediately step away from the children, uh, and you're going to want to then get in your car, probably a van at this point, uh, according to the story, and you're going to drive uh, in just as fast as possibly away. Uh, you already have five stars, according to like the GTA uh, cop tracker, so you're going to dump the van because you need to get a new car. You're going to hop on a Lime scooter, and then you're going to go all the way down Highway 36 in Colorado, all the way to 28th in Valmont, and then maybe dish the scooter in Vacuums R Us. And then definitely don't go there. Definitely don't go to Coyote Cleaners or Cosmos Pizza. Shout out to the Spicy Ranch. What you're going to want to do is you're going to go to the <laughs> Rayback Collective at 7 p.m. every single Sunday for the Boulder Comedy Show. That's what you are going to do. Stop being a predator and go to a comedy show. <laughs> Jesus, what a hot, what a hot pre- predatorial start! That one have. took God. a turn. That one was pretty aggressive overall. Uh, so yeah, that's that's where you can find me, Brent. What do you got going on? You're a busy guy. I am. I am one of those. I am a busy guy. Uh, it's because I have no wife, no life, and no kids. Uh, it is that doesn't uh, mean. You're not having a great time. That actually means I, you're probably having such a great time. I'm having a really good time compared yeah. to all my kid fr- my kid having <laughs> friends. My, my kid having friends, not my kid friends, because that would also, yeah, again, yeah. play into the story that we're building. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, really? My, this episode's going to get flagged. Uh, yeah, yeah, for, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you can follow me at I am Brent Gill. Uh, my comedy special's on there live from Philadelphia. Uh, which we shot in Philadelphia. If you couldn't put that together, please go watch that, <laughs> share it with your friends. I've had some phenomenal uh, messages sent out to me about it, so thank you to everybody that has watched it and everyone that made the effort to reach out and say, this changed my life. Thank Whoa. you. Whoa. If it changed your life, that's crazy. But I, I'm a life changer. So, uh, <laughs> Also, you can catch me. I got a bunch of shows this coming weekend, the 420 weekend, uh, and then my Chiba Hut tour is starting. Uh, so 
Starting up 420 Thursday, uh, April 20th, we are doing the second annual Brent Gill and Buds. Get it? Get it. Uh, <laughs> Brent, Brent Gill and Buds 420 show presented by Chiba Hut at the Comedy Fort in Fort Collins. Uh, if you are coming out, you can get uh, $4.20 tickets with promo code Chiba. Nice. Um, get and it. that is two shows, one at 7, one at 9 30. Uh, very excited for the lineup of bringing there. The next night, Friday, uh, April 21st, you can find me at High Note Comedy at the Skylark Lounge in South Broadway. The next night, back in Fort Collins, Don't Tell Comedy. I hate gas. Uh, that's why I love racing. <laughs> so you can catch me up there in Fort Collins. Uh, 23rd is Sunday, Boulder Comedy Show. I will physically be there in Boom. person. person. Uh, so please come check me out there. May 21st is the 10-year anniversary and Jeff's triumphant return to the Boulder Comedy Show. I will be there. Uh, he better. I'm waiting for him to say he can't for some reason. Nope, uh, I will but, be. Uh, so check out that 10-year anniversary. Uh, it's our 500th show, approximately. Uh, and this is the, a thing I've been doing for more than half of my career now, and I'm very proud of what I've done. My parents, my family's coming from Texas, Georgia, and Florida Whoa. to come celebrate with me. So That's awesome. Pretty excited about that. That's cool. And then, uh, I don't have dates for these yet, but these uh, are confirmed. Uh, so, if you live in any of the following towns, uh, start marking your calendar. Uh, the Chiba Hut tour will be coming uh, to a Chiba Hut near you in Denton, Texas, Riverside, California, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Bend, Oregon, Houston, Texas, Orlando, Florida, Wrigleyville, Illinois. Fucking Wrigleyville. Let's Excited go. about that. Uh, Milwaukee. Um, and North Oakland. I don't think that's in Milwaukee. She might've mistyped <laughs> that. Or I also will be in Oakland as well. Maybe, uh, St. Augustine, Florida, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Colorado Springs and Denver. Whoa. So a lot of shows, a lot of flying, a lot of points, love points. I love that. Uh, so check me out. Uh, I'm going to put all those on my website as well as my Instagram, uh, when those are live nice dude it's exciting I'm excited about that yeah huge so, also uh check out our producer cat orlean she's amazing uh she is doing all sorts of do by the way i didn't tell you this when we were out at the australian grand prix yeah she, we went to a um no this was that it when the fuck what did we do this at some point we did this where she we, we went to a karaoke place yeah and she has some pipes. She sang Etta James at last and stopped the bar. That's amazing. It was, it was insane. And then at the end, she's like, was that okay? I yeah. was like, that was fucking insane, Catherine. Yeah. It was um, almost annoying. When people yeah. are good at karaoke, you're like, Cat, stop being a professional singer. Go, go get on a stage, you yeah. fucking punk. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So follow her at KO Recording. Uh, our amazing editor, Jan, at Points in a Williams. Shout She's doing Jan. her video stuff on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, if you follow her, you can see a lot of her Formula One art as well. Um, and we love what she's doing, so thank you very much, uh, Jan. Um, and then merch. We got merch, baby. We got merch. We got merch. If you go to our Instagram page, uh, Grid Penalty F1, the first link in our bio, uh, you can see the link to our merch. It's also on Redbubble. It goes to the same place. It's all um, there. And speaking of merch, let's show off ours. I got some new merch. I'm going to stand yes. up and show this if you're watching let's our see YouTube. It. Oh, my I have, God. Look at that, dude. I got a golf shirt. For the formula or the Indy, Indy car, whatever the cars that go vroom. Yes, the Indy fast car, cars. The Grand Prix of of Long Beach. Dude, that's uh, awesome. And it's dope. It's soft. If it's you're listening, shirty. it is a beautiful light pink to a beautiful purple gradient golf shirt uh, on, and you can imagine Brent's body. It's just chiseled, <laughs> chiseled out of marble. It and, looks incredible. Uh, <laughs> that's a great shirt. I love that so much. It's way better than a t-shirt. I'm going to buy – if places have these more often, I'm going to be buying these forever. Fuck t-shirts. I'm yeah. buying golf shirts now. That's fair. You're a golf shirt guy. Mm -hmm. I have my merch review uh, this because sick. I bought – so I the, I mostly – I think I only have McLaren stuff. and Because he loves losers. I do. Hey, right. this I'm year. But before, 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 <laughs> before. Hey, hey, hey. Listen. <laughs> the upgrades are coming. Um, but <laughs> – I also, for the, for some people who might not know, I lived in Australia when I was younger, uh, yes. till I was 12. And so I, I got really excited. Williams for the Australian GP put out a really cool hoodie uh, that if you're watching online, here it is. It's got- It's uh, so cool. 
the Williams logo with a little kangaroo in the background and then a really nice embroidered Australia and Williams yeah. racing underneath it. Really cool little details on the drawstrings and just the hood. Anyway, it's the best the coloring quality. is dope. Yeah, it's bright yellow uh, with the green accent, which is like yeah. the unofficial, you know, national colors of Australia that aren't on their flag, but that's what they wear. And uh, is that true? Yeah, their their flag colors are uh, the British flag colors, red, white, and blue. Yeah, they have the Union Jack in the corner, and then the Southern Cross off to the right, which is like the constellation that's only in the Southern Hemisphere. That okay. is very Australian, and so so Australian. No, I had no clue what those stars were for. Yeah, no, that's the that's a uh, a constellation above Australia that is only in the Southern Hemisphere that they own. It's, the Southern Cross is an Australian <laughs> thing, so. Uh, so that's what what uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash were talking about when they were singing uh, Southern Cross. Yeah, there. That's it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Jeff probably has no same. idea what I'm talking about. No, nope. <laughs> I'm guessing they're not Australian. And if it's a Southern Cross, they're for sure not. Might be a different vibe. If uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Hey. All right, here we go. Back uh, on to Australia. <laughs> <sighs> uh, so, yeah. so those are their colors: yellow and green. Is kind of like the uh, the yeah the ones. Yes, so the you, criminals were like, "Look, fuck the the monarchy." Listen, listen Brad. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna choose our own. They absolutely were. Uh, yeah, they. If you know, if you see any Australian national team, like the Socceroos, which is the national soccer team, any cricket, like one day match, you know, shirt uniform, it's all green and uh, yellow. So the gold, the old gold and green. So. They, they did a great job. Shout out to Williams Racing. Obviously, we want you guys to succeed, but they have awesome merch. It's really good quality. This is not a sponsored ad. It just feels like I'm a sponsored ad for Williams Racing merch. It just, it's so hard. I feel like a lot of F1 fans might, you know, be, might relate to this. A lot of the F1 merch ranges in quality so drastically. Yeah. I have a couple pieces that are incredible, and then some are just, they don't fit right. They're weird sizing. I'm That's what big, happened to me. Yeah. yeah, I'm a big guy. I'm six four, and so I the side, the tall, like the length is always a little odd, or the materials are weighted weird. Anyway, they crushed it. Williams Racing, shout out, you guys did a good job. Uh, thank that you. That rules. Much. I love it. So I got much. some Mercedes shit, and it just doesn't fit right. It's like yeah. it's like tight around my tits and loose around my waist, <laughs> and I'm like, look, I know, I know, I have tits, and I shouldn't. I get it, yeah. but. Uh, let's real, not, yeah. you know, it's a real Euro that. fit. Uh, I don't like it, but yeah, I have a couple of McLaren pieces that are a f from like the official McLaren store and those are nice. And then I have a couple like third party pieces that just fit weird, um, printed probably. Yeah. Just in some random warehouse in, <laughs> in Bangladesh England. or something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Somewhere crazy. So either way, Williams crushed it, but Hell that's yeah. good. Yeah, man. Well, that's we'll it. check out our merch on Redbubble. Jeff Tice designed all the the logos and all the art on there. Uh, if if you don't know Jeff, he's a great artist and podcast host. He's a guy. Uh, you can you can follow him at Jeffrey Tice. <laughs> also, he's a guy we know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, dude, we got stickers, coffee cups, mu yeah. anything you could print on. Redbubble yeah. prints on. And then. Um, if you have ideas for merch, message us. You can also find us chatting about merch and different ideas in the Discord channel. Shout out to the Discord. Uh, it's go. been so Active. much fun. It is fun. Uh, join the Discord. It's in our bio on Instagram and YouTube. You can just find it anywhere you see our profile. Um, but, man, it's a good time. We're just chatting about all different things. Uh, we have our own resident expert, Kevin. Shout out to Kevin Owens. It's old Kevin's yeah. Corner in there. He's a, he's a great help. Um, but we're having a good time. We're chatting. You know, If you don't know something or if you want to learn something, uh, a lot of times we're asking questions about stuff, just figuring out all the complexities, the different fun things. We're also talking about everything. The news, just it's a good time in there. We're having fun. Yeah. Uh, it's a good good community. We appreciate you guys for being fun, respectful, having a good time. We love it. Uh, so hop in the Discord. Other than that, we're just having a great life. Life is good, dude. Life is really good. <laughs> it is good. What'd you do this week? Dude, here's how good my life is. Uh, it's the best because I do love F1. We did have a break here. We're waiting for two more weeks for Baku Ugh. to happen. But I, being a huge basketball fan, the NBA playoffs started. And so Mallory, my wife, uh, and our sweet baby, they went to go see some family up in northern Colorado on Saturday. And I was okay. like, I, so I, I, and I ended up not going. I got a little bit of work done. And then at 11 a.m., the NBA started playing playoff basketball games. 
And then it just rolled into me watching every single basketball game the whole weekend. <laughs> I did do my fatherly duties and, you know, was with the child when I needed to be. And I was present. But, man, playoff basketball will make you a pretty bad father overall. You were physically present, not <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. mentally present. Okay, yeah, I, yeah. I see that. I That's how kept, I would be a father. Yeah. yeah, she, like, sat up and I was just like, you got to have better presence in the post. And then I just, you know, like, really tried to teach her how to – do some post moves, but no, it was awesome. I, I you just got feel... Luna in there to do to, oh. to, to do some defense, and you yeah. know you got you got your. She doesn't know. Handling. She has no control over her body. She's definitely <laughs> banging in the post. So, yeah, man, that was it. Just chilled, watched some basketball. Um, I'm a big Nuggets fan, so we had a great game. We we had a great game. Yes, uh, we did. <laughs> me, yes, we did. Me we were all personally. there. Jeff was yes. on the bench. Yes, I was there. Uh, so yeah, it's cool, man. But what about you? It seems like you had a <sighs> wild week. It's been long. It's been a yeah. long week. It's just like the start to what is what I know is happening in my summer. R.I.P. my cat, because if he makes it through this summer, yeah, uh, he is going to hate me. Be um, lonely. <laughs> boy, I feel bad. I had my neighbor upstairs watch my cat, yeah. uh, and my cat's very vocal, and she loves cats and everything, but now it's like... I don't know if I can keep asking you to watch my cat because I don't know what you have brought in. Like, I don't think you understand the madness you've just opened the door to. Because yeah. if you say, I love it, I'll do it any time. I'm like, how about I'll come pick them up in September? Yeah, yeah. You just read off your Chiba Hut dates. You're like, Dude, here we go. <laughs> I'm like thinking about giving her a list of like my true, like, here's when I'm leaving. Or do any of these, do you want to watch them? Because otherwise, yeah. I'll just leave them in here and have a cat sitter come hang out. Yeah, that's uh, a way to do but it. It's a, it's not great, but, uh, I went, uh, exciting week. I went to, uh, Florida. I fixed my Z3, broke my Z3. That was fun. <laughs> I am so ready for this new car. Here's the problem with my Z3. <laughs> I love this car. It's the one that's got the LS one out of a Corvette in it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I love it. I can't tell you how much fun I had driving it to the Grand Prix because it's full of car guys. Yeah, and I can't. I, I I got stopped at every stoplight with like a, a window rolled down, and someone's like, "I think sounds pretty choppy, man. What uh, what you got in there?" And I'm like, "Yo, <laughs> it was uh." So I, I the grin on my face around my car was so fun. I love uh, it. And then I'm driving home on Sunday, and every time I got off throttle. I mean, it was vibrating bad, like real bad. Uh, uh, and then it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And then I'm in like El Segundo-ish, like south of, of, of LAX. And I'm like, something's wrong. So I pull over. I look under the car. I don't see anything wrong. The axles, which is what I just you know replaced, look uh, fine. I can't really get under it, under it to see if it's the drive shaft. Yeah. And then I go to drive away and I hear clunk, 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 clunk. And I'm like, okay, it's not good. So about three hours later, my tow truck comes. Oh, uh, no. And then I sent you that picture. So I don't know exactly what's wrong with it. Yeah. Um, but it is an old car. It was put together in its current form in like 2008, 2010. Yeah. It's fucking old. I get it. And it's been driven hard for all this time. So still, it is what it is. Uh, but I got to see my parents in Florida. I went nice. down and visited them uh, in the Panhandle. That's where they kind of split their time uh, between Florida and Georgia because they're old. And... <laughs> Played some golf with my dad. Ooh, nice. Got my swing back going, which is good. Yes. Um, and then went straight from Florida. So <clears throat> I knew I was going to the IndyCar Grand Prix in Long Beach. Yes. The Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. Of Long Beach. And so I drove to Orange County Airport, which is like an hour away from my house. Yep. And I flew to Florida from Orange County. So I could fly back on Friday and drive straight to Long Beach and Ooh. go to day one of the Grand Prix. Perfect. So I left Florida at 6 a.m. And then I drive, I fly all the way across country. Yes. And then I get in my car and then I go right to the Grand Prix. Yes. And it, Jeff, it was fucking awesome. Oh, this so whole glad. Weekend, this whole weekend was so goddamn cool, man. I can't even, I can't even wrap my head. I, I am in love with motor racing so much more now than yes. I was ever before. And I, I still, like, don't get me wrong, Formula One is still my number one. I love it so much. But of being course. able to drink in these other disciplines of the sport and these yeah. other categories and stuff like that, it was so cool. Um, yeah, I love uh, So you went the first, you went on Thursday, first day, Thursday. Friday, or, Saturday, Sunday. Friday. Okay, so because it was Friday. Yeah. I woke up Friday, and I was just going about my day working and stuff. And then I got a text message from you that just said, 
this fucking rules. And I was like, was there a picture that was supposed to come with this? I was like, what is Brent up to? And then it clicked and I was like, oh, he just got there. I was like, nice. Dude. And then it was just a nice stream of little check-in points throughout the weekend of just all the cool stuff going on. It made me so happy that you were so excited to be there. And I'm so glad that it was, it exceeded your expectations. That's so, awesome. so much. So, so much. So, so, so far I've gone to a NASCAR race. Uh, I've gone to drag racing, uh, formula one races, and this is my first IndyCar weekend. Yeah. Um, and it's a street course in long beach. It's like right on shoreline. Like my seats were on shoreline drive and that's like where the big straightaway was. So cool. Uh, and what's so cool about it is, you know, I've been to street tracks you know for sure but miami didn't have the same vibe no. that this did because it's like no. it's around it's around the uh hard rock stadium in miami yeah. and and you can see it kind of going over some some, un, some over passes for the highway and stuff like that but this was like in the city in the city like you look up and there's apartment complexes and big hotels and high rises yeah you come around and there's like the century 21 movie theater or the uh, century mark whatever it is and then there's a, just a tokyo joe's and a bubba <laughs> gump shrimp company and then just cars going 200 miles an hour by them and it was it was so it was so like just in your face in the city it, yeah. it i mean I, I i the the feel of it i can't describe it of just looking up and seeing that when you're walking up to it you can hear the thunder yeah. off the the buildings co coming yeah. through that's awesome. Um, what did you do Friday? So, yeah, you said that there was a bunch of other race series happening, yep. and you said some of them were just as exciting as the IndyCar. Yeah. But was there any actual races, full on races on Friday, or were they all Saturday Sunday? No, the full on races were Saturday Sunday. For, cool. uh, Fridays were all um, Fridays were all uh, practice and stuff like that, cool. um, and then they had. So Friday I did, I went there cause here's my new, here's my game plan, which Elon and I kind of figured this out after we went to, after you and I went to Austin Yep. in 21, yep. uh, 22, I had a game plan. You go there Friday, you scope out the grounds, where do you want to be? All that kind of stuff. Saturday, you confirm that's what you want to do. And then Sunday, you don't fuck around. You just go to your spot, and that's where you are. Yep. Um, and I think that's – I still think that's the good game plan. Um, so Friday, I went and just kind of walked around the whole grounds, uh, and they had historic F1 practices. They had the nice. Porsche Carrera Cup, and they had the IMSA races, and they had cool. the uh, Stadium Super Truck Series which I haven't posted yes. a video of it, but we're going to get into that in just a second. We're going to talk about that for the Saturday day. Um, so Friday, it, it to me, it was just – because Friday they allow – it's kind of a free day. Oh, nice. If you, if you live in the area or there's passes to everything, you, you, you have to acquire one, but it's very easy to get into for free because they just want kind of people there to buy their concessions for $19 a, of a cheeseburger. Uh, and then you – what I realized is I kind of fucked up on my purchase of my tickets because yeah. there was no TV in front of me. I thought being across from pit row and being at the start finish line, there'd be yep. a good TV there. And I was split between two, two TVs, which ah. kind of sucked. Um, so I didn't love that part, but uh, it was really just kind of getting the feeling for everything, seeing yeah. the Indy car go through practices and stuff like that. And the IMSA races, the international motorsport association is what that stands for. Yeah. It, it might be, in my top three favorite dis like like racing series. That's it's so cool. So fucking cool because there's just so many different types of cars on the track. There's there's the prototypes. There's the there's there's Porsches. There's Lamborghinis. There's Aston Martins. There's Mer the Mercedes uh, GT. There's just all these different disciplines. And apparently IMSA also include which they weren't there. Yeah. The um, uh, Le Mans prototypes. They had the Daytona prototypes as well. I mean, they no, had all no, sorts of shit there. No Z3 LS? No Z3 No Z3 LS. It was pretty uh, – I was actually kind of mad. I was like, you guys, I feel like I should be here for this. Listen, um, it's right over there. I put it right there. <laughs> I could pull it in. It, 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 it's fine. Is it broken? Not at this point. Not yet. Not yeah. yet. It will be, but don't worry. Um, so that was Friday. 
And again, it was really just kind of getting getting your your bearings together. I, yeah. I wrote some notes. Let's look at these notes you took all this time to fucking write out. I'm excited to hear uh, about them. Uh, it was cool seeing all the streets. IMSA cars are incredible. Uh, yeah, none of this is important. We can edit all this out right here while I'm looking uh. at this shit. Um, here's what I thought was interesting, though. I The prototype cars... So I've seen these on, and Kevin was talking about these yep. in the Discord. So I was really, really uh, tr- making an, an effort to get there and see these these IMSA cars, and thank God I did. The Cadillac has one of the coolest fucking car motor hybrids I've ever seen. It's the prototype car. Yeah. There's pictures of them on my Instagram and on the Grid Penalty Instagram, uh, and it's a hybrid and a V8. It's a hybrid V8. And what's yeah. cool about this one is it's the only one where it's like mostly hybrid until it gets to a certain speed and then the V8 kicks in. That's cool. And there's videos on Instagram where it's just by itself and it's just and then it, 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 like as it takes off. And it was it was so fun seeing all of that. Yeah. Uh, so that was Friday. I made my plans. Then we get to day two. Uh, now, day two, they had the IMSA Grand Prix, which was uh, 100 minutes of racing. Uh, they had the... Um, um, historic Formula One races. They cool. had, I think there were like 18 cars on there. Most of them were pre-1970. I think the newest Damn. car was like 1983 was the newest. Terrifying um, to think about. Dude. Putting a car but, like that. Because you know they're a pretty Oh, people penny. crashed. Oh, no. People crashed for sure. And it's funny because we talk shit about Charles Leclerc for uh, <laughs> uh, wrecking the uh, Ferrari uh, Nicky Lauda's car oh, right. in the yeah, in, in Monaco, in Monaco yeah. for, for the historic Grand Prix. Uh, and a couple people crashed these as well. And it's only 15 minutes of racing. Ooh. That's how old these cars are. They're like, look, don't fuck anything up. This shit's yeah. too hard to find now. Yeah, seriously. But what what I thought was cool about the 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 historic F1 was a, was a couple things. Uh, first off, most of the cars there had that Cosworth motor, which oh. we talked about in a previous episode when we Annette, when we talked about uh, Ford joining mm-hmm. with Red Bull. Yep. And then we looked through the history of Ford in Formula One, and uh, Ford just dominate. They teamed up with Cosworth, and that motor dominated a, a, a decade of of motor racing. Yep. Most of them had that same motor in this historic That's race. Awesome. But the other thing that was crazy is how far forward they sit in these yeah. tiny little cars. Yeah. Like some of these guys, it looks like they're sitting four inches behind the front axle. Like it yeah. almost looks like their pedals and shit are in front of the front axle. And if yeah. you get in a, in a head-on collision, You're there's done. nothing There's nothing between you. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm going to – I couldn't spam Instagram so hard with all these pictures I have. Yeah. But I'm going to – Put them send, out. Uh, I'm going to post some more today. Yeah. Uh, but it's crazy just to see how far forward they are and yeah. how small tiny the, tiny the F1 cars were back in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. Tiny and then how and like the just being steel. They're they're not yeah. made out of carbon fiber and they're not no. made out of aluminum. They're just hard steel and you're just in a death trap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. man. In the front end of a death trap, like it, you can tell that these were designed kind of like fighter jets, because you know, yeah. like if you fly, fi- if you look at a fighter jet, you are so much further in front of the plane yeah. than than you know anything else, and it kind of it really did look look the same. Uh, it was also interesting to hear them. How oh yeah, what did they, they sound sounded. like? They sounded more like a. It almost sounded like a Formula Two car. Oh, like like it. it what, what I noticed when we were in Miami, those Formula Two cars are all popping when they yes. shift because they yeah. have a little extra spray of fuel to cool down uh, the motor yeah. a bit. And so and in, in Formula One, it doesn't it, it doesn't sound like that. Uh, and it's also a lot quieter. The Formula yeah. One cars nowadays. Yeah. Um, but they were very they were very loud and their wheels. They look like go kart wheels. Yeah. <laughs> Like your wheels and tires are so small. It's like you, yeah. you did you pull that off a golf cart? Like is that a racing slick for an easy go? Uh, <laughs> so I thought that was pretty interesting as well. On like you know, it, it looks like they're on like ten inch rims or something. I yeah. mean, they're they're all very small. Weird. Um, so but cool the the IMSA races, so the IMSA Grand Prix was super cool. Um, again, because it's all different types of cars, and, and so what I note. 
yeah, yeah. go ahead. I was just say you said the prototypes just annihilated, right? Dominated. Like, yeah. Absolutely. It, it it makes me want to learn more about the IMSA rules and regulations because yeah. it's like, well, there's no chance here. Yeah. For these other cars. So I think it's just a bunch of different classes all on the track at one time. And my buddy of mine reached out on Instagram when he saw those videos and he's like, these these IMSA races, like you'll have upwards of like 50 cars on the track sometimes. Yeah. Um, and so everyone's getting blue flags because they're getting passed on the straightaway. Yeah. But what I thought was cool about it is it adds a whole nother level of challenge for the prototype drivers because they are so much faster than everything else. Yeah. But then they'll catch up to the end of the of the grid and they're in traffic again. Yep. And sure, they get the blue flag to move over, but you got to stay with them in turns until you can safely move out of the way to let them go past you. Yeah. So it does give the the uh, people chasing you a kind of a chance to catch up. Yeah. Because when you both get on a straightaway, now you're right behind them because these other two cars being held off to the side. Enough. Yeah. Which 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 adds a pretty big challenge to it. Yeah. Um, and they. But none of the prototypes had sponsors. Oh, really? It it was, I mean, some of them did. What the there was one team that did that was sponsored by C. I mean, they were like like the McLaren of the prototypes. I mean, yeah. they had sponsors every single inch of the car. <laughs> Sirius XM was a huge sponsor of it as well. Yeah. And then you look at the the BMWs, the Cadillac, and the Porsches, and it's like shell. And they're oil. just they're just like. We're BMW. That's the sponsor. We, we manufactured. We made this. This is our. Yeah. That makes sense. I guess you. That's one hundred percent what it felt like. Yeah, the prototype for BMW. They're like, we're BMW. This is what yeah. we make. This is our prototype. Yeah. That's interesting. It, uh, and yeah. they're also single seat cars. So if that's, you don't, so it, it, it's like a, it's like an airplane in there too. That's what I was. What stuck out to me when you posted the pictures of them that they have like the little bubble mm-hmm. cockpit and mm-hmm. to me. <laughs> It reminded me of like an old like I don't know like it was designed for like an Adam West Batman show like an old it looked like <laughs> it does an look old like an old Batmobile Batmobile like <laughs> <laughs> just perfectly bubble round almost cartoonishly round for the little cockpit and then and then yeah just this beautiful very squared off on the the edges very you know linear and and geometric looking they they don't really look I mean, they do look flowy, but not anything like a, a Formula One Way more one squared car. than a yeah, Formula very, One Yeah, very, very blocky yeah. in, a, in a very fast, cool-looking way, though. That doesn't, you yeah. know, that's not a, a, a knock on it. And so that was the first thing I noticed. I was like, man, again, again, just thinking about myself in these cars, like the old F1 cars and these cars. I was like, I just wouldn't fit in these cars. I'm too big. <laughs> I wish I could. I was like, there's no possible physical way that I could ever be involved in getting in one of these cars. Yeah. I think I yeah. posted a picture of the cockpit uh, when, because we had, at, so I got paddock passes uh, awesome. for Saturday, Sunday. And so uh, after the IMSA race was done, they all were in a corral and they all got reviewed by IMSA. Every single one of them got pushed onto the scale, got pushed yeah. through. They had to remove the engine cover and check through all these things. Dang. And so I was right on it. Yeah. Uh, and so I was able to get a picture of inside the cockpit. And the cockpit of the Indy cars and the cockpit of those prototypes, and I'm sure the cockpit of the Formula One car too, it's so small. Yeah. I mean, it is yeah. so freaking small. I yeah. I understand when you're in the seat how it could be somewhat comfortable, but getting in the seat, I'm like, totally. I feel like I'm wider than the than the yeah. hips to get yeah. in. Well, you see, like Formula One drivers, when they turn, they have little notches for their wrists or their hands. Yeah. Just to fit. It's like, damn, yeah, they really do make everything perfectly you fit know, for them. Right around them. That's really cool though. That's yeah. I love that. It was also cool with the IMSA races. There's pro drivers and amateur drivers as well. Oh nice. Uh, and so like they're all in their own series. There's the GTD, which is Daytona, and the GTP, which is the prototype. Um, and they, at least for the prototypes, I don't know if they did it for all cars, but there were two drivers. Oh. And it was only it was only like a 100-minute race, so it's nothing crazy, but there yeah. were two drivers. And they swap uh, out mid-stop? like pit, uh-huh. pit stop? Dude. Uh-huh. And I don't know if there's like a requirement on how much time they have to race, or it has to be dead even. Yeah. Uh, or you just have to switch, you know, maybe some guy drives 10 minutes and the other guy drives 90. I don't know. Um, Whatever. Because, again, I, I, I haven't looked into this, the, the regulations and rules of it yet, but it was, yeah. it was so, so fun to see. Because it feels like anyone can be eligible. 
That's cool. It's like, do you have we're, a sports car? We're doing it. Fucking got, come on in, You got dog. $400 million to <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? It. Hope you brought sponsors. Let's go. Um, and so so that was, 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 was really fun. But what I also noticed was kind of a letdown was the helicopter guy. Oh, not as Which you, not as premier and talented. You never would have thought this, but the helicopter guy. It's hilarious. It, it it looked like it looked like they just hired the the <laughs> the Long Beach Police Department's helicopter guy because he's like, well, look, I've I've been on some chases before. I can Listen, do that. I can spotlight a car pretty good, <laughs> right? But compared to the Formula One helicopter guy, the yeah. Formula One dude is a fucking stunt pilot. This that guy, guy rules. is flying backwards. He's flipping UEs. I mean, he's he's three, 200 feet off the ground at most, 100 yeah. feet. I mean, I am spinning all over my screen right now. I am, I'm frothing at the mouth. I'm so excited about <laughs> you this. You love helicopter guy. Dude, he he's so much better at Formula One, and it makes the sport look so much faster the Funny. Formula One helicopter guy. Yeah. And I think they fly that guy. I think they put him everywhere. Like, I yeah. think they ship yeah. his his helicopter and he goes with the whole series. Yeah. Uh, I want him on the show. That's I right. want to talk to that guy. Helicopter guy. <laughs> if anybody knows helicopter guy for Formula One, <laughs> please save yeah. me some fucking research and, and, <laughs> and, and hit us up with his deets because I yeah. want him on there because it was cool, but... And if he, we want to, if we want to talk to the Long Beach helicopter guy, we'll just call the Long Beach Police Department and we'll be like, call "Hey, 911. is uh, Officer Daniels available <laughs> to talk to us?" It would have been funny if they had a Long Beach Police helicopter, <laughs> just a just a Bad, white and black. I mean, yeah. <laughs> They're like, I, I like the idea that the Long Beach Grand Prix is happening, and no one told the police department. And they're like, "What is going on over what here? What the fuck is happening? Oh my god." <laughs> What are these cars? What are these guys yeah. doing? What are these, yeah. what are these it, rascals it, up to over here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen this before. Come on. Let's get it, Williams. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it is crazy, too, how much, how mobile this operation is. Yes. Uh, I mean, it is... It, on Saturday, when they had the IMSA races, uh, there you know all these eighteen wheelers were lined up in there uh, through the paddock. You could see all this stuff, and then the next day, I show up on Sunday, and they're all gone. Whoa! Like they're all gone, and now it's just the the Indy car paddocks, um, and it's a parking lot now for the exotic car parade. <laughs> and there's like four hundred cars in there. I have like a before and an after picture Whoa. of what this parking lot looks like, yeah. and they were gone overnight. And and I mean, it had to be seventy trucks, dude. That's crazy. And, and and also, I thought this was crazy the way that they shipped the cars, the eighteen wheelers. God, I got footage of this too. I got so much footage; it's insane. It's exciting. They 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 drive them up on a platform, and the platform it's like a box truck type platform, yeah. and it raises it up to the top of the of the of the trailer and they push the car into the top of the trailer and their offices are below uh, where cool. where the car is. Yep. So it, it, I mean it just I can imagine how cool it is the first month you work for a team like this. Yeah, just and to then see you're like the get me out of this tiny fucking shoebox. I feel like I'm in a coffin. I hate this. Yeah, I and it's like this. it's hot. It's everything smells like motor oil and burnt or rubber. Burnt rubber. And, yep, yeah. Yep. Yep. It's I bet exactly that. I bet it's awesome for a week and you're just like, oh my God. You know, yeah. the the shine probably wears off real right. quick. How right. did you feel? How was the the indie car race? How did you the on Sunday? Because I watched a little bit of it, um, and it's it was exciting. And but yeah, that's how was it? I watched how it was when that I got compared home. to a Formula One race. Like Very the similar. There. Cool. Very similar. Um, I would say this. The the biggest difference is it's not so insanely packed and crazy. Yeah. Uh, it's not – I mean, I was pretty tired by by day three anyway, as you are with these types of weekends. You're walking f- three to ten miles a day. Totally. I mean, it's really – it's a lot of walking. Um, and same thing. You want to be near a TV. Uh, th- there is a huge perk to being there, though, because – feeling them and hearing them as you're watching them on the screen that's so much more different than just watching it on the screen yeah and doing the combo of those is so much better than just watching them go by yeah because you have no fucking clue what's happening so it was very similar that way uh the 
the the pre the pre race parade was the same. I mean, all the like the pomp and circumstance around yeah. the the race was very similar feeling. Yeah. Uh, but it felt again, it felt more accessible. Yeah. Um, Dude, you I, got a picture with <laughs> Roman Grosjean. This That's is amazing. my favorite part. This is my favorite part. I I need to go to these races alone all the time because when it's just me, I can blend in with groups of people. Yeah. So I was in the paddock, uh, and there's just groups of people, and I'm like, well, where are they going? So and they had really cool cool credentials and everything. So I just got in the middle of this group, and then I am in the pits. Oh, I am my in God. the pits, <laughs> and then I'm watching them wheel the cars out into the pit, it, like in front of me. Like, I could spit on him. Like, I saw That's Chip Ganassi just riding around on a pit bike. Cruising. Uh, then I see another group of people walking onto the track. I'm like, well, why am I behind this fence? Fuck that noise. So I just <laughs> blended into that group, and now I'm on the actual racetrack. You're going to blend like, your way into just in the car. You're like, and then I was like, why couldn't I just put a helmet on and race in the in the race? <laughs> Give me a fire suit, extra large, you're just, short waist, or short you're legs. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tight around the tits, loose around the, the waist. And then, and I'm just picturing you in, a, in an indie car going so fast down a straight, and then you've got your selfie stick just out of the top. Just, Woo! Like, oh, great. <laughs> yeah. So I'm on I'm on the track for their their like when they announce the drivers and they introduce the drivers and everything. Tons of press down there. I yeah. mean, I did not belong there. You're and singing I'm, the national anthem all of a sudden. You're like, well, I, I guess. I, 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 dude, we were all there. I was like, let me get up there. Fuck this guy. <laughs> uh, I watched the race again, and you can when they're interviewing Pato Award. Yeah. You can see me in the I background yeah. with my with my selfie stick up. I'm like, uh, oh, there I am. So dope. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like in there, and and apparently these these tickets were like a thousand bucks to get this access hilarious and i am like they just allow you to walk next to the car like i'm take i am like again i could touch the car if they didn't have the whole team like staring at it. you yeah the drivers were there standing next to their car taking pictures that that's how i got my picture with um grosjean and it was so cool. he was truly the only one that i wanted to take a picture with i, I mean pato would have been cool all that stuff yeah. but i was like whatever and he was there, and I was like, "Let me. Can I just get a?" Quick? He's like, "Yeah, for sure." Oh, like, yeah, that's my tight. Man. And he took P two, or, or you know, he, he oh yeah, second, he got a podium. Was yeah, great. great. Yeah, and he had, he's had a rough start to his season. Yeah, uh, he had two DNFs to start this uh, uh, season with, but it uh, it was just this this exclusivity, this access, being able to touch the tires. Like I wanted to feel how sticky they were. Yeah, uh, seeing seeing the tires after they ran. And how just destroyed that rubber gets. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was it was so cool. Uh, all the rich girls who had that kind of access. Yeah. What is how, how? Here we go. <laughs> why Here why does go. money make them so much hotter? I, I don't understand. <laughs> because like we like we you know if you're in general admission, you're like yeah. okay, you know. This is a Long Beach six right here. <laughs> it's a Hollywood four, and then you get on the track, and you're like, "That is a Hollywood 12. Holy That's God! Hilarious. You must you must be dating a driver, uh, I guess, uh, That's so or funny. or an owner. Um, but <laughs> I can't believe I threw that in there. It's just in my notes. I just yep. put rich girls are hot. I want yep. a car. Of girl. course, of course. That's what I put in my notes. <laughs> I took the time to take my phone out and write that down. Um, but it was it was very cool. To get that kind of access, that's that's that I think is also what made it so much more fun is being able to yeah. look at the cars up close like that, see yeah. them putting together, and uh, seeing the drivers and all how everyone's going crazy over mm -hmm. them. And the people that like IndyCar are just like Formula One uh, fans. They they know everything about these drivers. Like this yeah. guy I was standing next to, oh, it's like, oh, here's so and so's car. Here's so and so's car. There's so and so who's the team print. I'm like, yeah. How do you? Who, They're what? in it. They're in it. But That's I know great. all that about Formula One, so I yeah. guess it makes sense. Yeah, um, it adds up. But there, it was it was so cool, and then they shuffled us off, and uh, the race started, and I tried to get my way into it. Like, I, I tried to just go with the flow into, like, more access and got yeah. denied hard. It's so funny. Um, they're like, credentials? And I was like, oh, they're in my bag somewhere. And uh, it, Whoops. I couldn't get it. But like, it's anyway, <laughs> to finish it off, I would say that the – the race itself uh, was was very, very much like Formula One. Yep. Uh, it was, you know, it, it, I think it was 84 laps, 86 laps, something like that. And yep. 
the the biggest difference I saw throughout the whole weekend is truly how good these drivers, these IndyCar drivers are. They yeah. they truly are like millimeters of perfection yeah. at 200 miles an hour because the other races had a lot of yellow flags. The IMSA race had, had yellow flags. Uh, even the historic Grand Prix had a yellow flag. <laughs> it's a 15 minute race and there was a yellow flag. Um, I think the IMSA race finished under yellow it did. Uh, as well yeah, I did under see caution. That. Yep. And uh, there was, I think two yellows in the IndyCar Grand Prix. Uh, and they were towards the beginning and I feel like the last like 60 laps was just good, clean racing. Nice. Um, and it's, so what I didn't know is that the Long Beach Grand Prix has been going on for 48 years. I think it's the longest they've been at any oh, one track. That's cool. Um, and according to all the reports, it is the one that they, they want to win Indy 500 and they want to win Long Beach. That's, That's cool. like it feels like it's their Monaco, and it kind of yeah. is. It's so tight. The walls are so the Close. track is so narrow. Yeah. Um. So it just, I mean, if you get a, if you get a chance to go to an Indy car race in your town, I I highly recommend it. It'll get your F one juices flowing. <laughs> so I mean, so strong and thick. It, oh, it, uh, nice. <laughs> it was it was so fun feeling the power and just being able to have access to it. So when you yeah. go to a Formula One race and you don't have access, you at least kind of know what that vibe's like. Feel the um, difference. Yeah. And you can try to sneak your way into something. That's nice. I like yeah. that. So. Oh, dude, it that was makes great. me so happy. I love it so much. I'm glad that it was a good time. I, uh, I, I I can't recommend it enough, Jeff. That's so I, cool. I wish you could have come with. I know. I I definitely will make a point to get to a, an Indy car race now. Do uh, they do this in Colorado at all? I don't think so. I don't think there's one. It'd be fun to one see on... one in, at altitude. Yeah, they were. There was. I'm not sure. I will have to check the. Uh, they the used schedule, to do but... it in downtown Denver. I was told they yep. like drove on Spear over to Colfax and like had this whole kind of loop around the Pepsi yeah. Center or the Ball Arena now. Yeah. Um, so that's cool, but. Uh, e even the IMSA races is cool. Any just it, it's just cool yeah. to see those up close, and I think it gives yeah. you a better appreciation of how much work and how much behind the scenes there is. How many people are involved, even with the smallest teams? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it, it is. It's borderline unattainable. Yeah. Uh, to to have a racing team. Uh, yeah. In, in, in any discipline. Yeah. So that's awesome. Well. Speaking of unattainable, let's get We're into done. some We're real done. quick. We're, I, I loved it so much. Formula One stuff. Yeah, let, just real quick. We'll just just real quick because it is an off week, uh, but there is some fun news going on in the F1 world. Uh, speaking of inaccessible, just real quick, a Fuck fun little a. thing that popped up uh, this week. This is wild. Is that our Lord and Savior, Toto Wolf. Toto! Toto, uh, being the financial juggernaut that he is, has now... Uh, tipped over the threshold of a, a billion dollars in his career. He is a worth net worth of over a billion dollars. That's insane. Which is unbelievable. Uh, up there with, uh, the, I think there wasn't too many athletes. Everyone else was either, yeah, like owners or, but there was, I think Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, and LeBron James are in that, up yeah. in the top 10. And then Toto has now uh, cemented himself into that category. So pretty impressive especially in a sport that already is driven and operated by just too much money. Um, yeah. So good for him, I guess. Well, That's well crazy. you know why he's a billionaire now? Uh, well, is why? because this cost cap. Nah. They have all this extra money that is like, well, we don't know what to do with it. So yeah. here are your shares. <laughs> and that's the only that's the only thing holding Horner back from being a billionaire is is catering. <laughs> they put it all on catering, <laughs> and it's like, man. You could be a billionaire if the sandwiches weren't so premium. Uh, so that's or if cool. Ginger Spice had a second album. Yeah. Uh, sorry, that was that. Nah, that was it. Yeah, was appropriate. I Fuck mean, it. Spice Girl <laughs> shots, hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I love that the idea we're losing listeners. They're like, well, we we're with you through IndyCar and, and and F1, but as soon as you took a shot at the Spice Girls, we're out. We're out. Uh, <laughs> But then coming into, we have one more week, and then we are into race week next week. We're going to be in Azerbaijan. We, again, I am on the Nuggets, and I yep, also race for Formula One. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but and Azerbaijan. Jeff and I are, are going to get on a flight now, because that's we'll how be long there. it's going to take yep. to get there. We're the new helicopter guys. We're coming yeah. in hot <laughs> for, for Baku. Uh, but 
Just real quick, excited for that because there's been a couple rumblings, smaller rumblings around Ferrari bringing some upgrades, which hopefully that's exciting. Uh, they're going to bring a new diffuser or a diffuser that fits a little different on the back of the car. Yeah. So we'll see how that works out. Then allegedly, allegedly, Ferrari is also trying to bring some upgrades closer to Barcelona a few weeks after that uh, because we just have a ton of races rattling off the next few weeks yeah. after Baku. Um, but allegedly they're going to start shifting their side pod design towards the, what people are calling the Red Bull, like downwash that very flowy um, mm -hmm. Adrian Newey looking uh, side pod. So we'll see what happens there with Ferrari. Exciting. Who knows? You know, yeah. a lot of these aero updates, you, it just depends on how it plays with the rest of the car. Yeah. And then the big one, Shout out to... Hold on real quick before we yeah, go yeah, yeah. there. I do want to say, I think it's pretty cool, um, and, and I forget how it was last year and the, the year before season-wise, but I like that we had three races and then like three weeks off for yeah. figuring shit out because yep. you have testing and then you go right into it. You got a couple races and then it's like, okay, we know what's wrong. We have all the yeah. data. We have the telemetry and all that stuff on there. And then I feel like this next hunk between now and summer break yep. uh, is going to be like, okay, who who can really turn shit around? Yes. And if there's anyone that can turn shit around, it's it's Mercedes, I think. Absolutely. Which which They've already, they have. Yes, they've already shown that they're they've got what it takes. They took a huge step forward. You know, like we said, we were pretty hard on them, and then they're immediately like in second. They they have they listen to us. I appreciate yeah. that. They heard what we were saying. They have Toto the listens second, to the pod. Third best car right now. You know, besides yeah. Aston and and like Red Bull, obviously a, a, a very clear number one. So they're in the mix between Ferrari, Aston, and themselves. Yeah. And I think they have the resources and the ability yeah. to jump pretty high up. I wouldn't be surprised if they start to contend and win a few races this year. I hope they uh, do. Yeah. And then also, I think that McLaren will probably win the world championship. Uh, absolutely. 100%. <laughs> after these, <Wow. laughs> after these upgrades, after so, these upgrades, huh? Yeah. That's so, a big, uh, that's a big jump. <laughs> I have more uh, faith in them than Zach Brown. They're the team <laughs> CEO. So apparently that's the, the next big one is McLaren has a quote unquote, huge upgrade package coming to Azerbaijan. We'll see. Uh, allegedly, it is the a new floor and a new side pod design. So okay. we'll see. Maybe maybe they go the Aston route and they show up with a Red Bull and part with some, three with, with <laughs> the Chrome a Chrome logo three. on it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> just the Google like, Chrome presents Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, it looks like you're driving through Times Square. That's it. Just billboards and digital screens and just a full chrome mirrored look so yeah. everyone gets distracted on the on the yeah. all these hot guys like god look at it they, they can't hey. not look at a mirror they're Ooh. like i just can't they all yeah. go into the wall yeah M M mclaren just kills it from here on out it's a good uh, strategy because then other people's cars logos are reflected on your car therefore legally those other logos need to pay you money so you could double sponsors get everyone to pay you by reflecting their logo it's simple uh sponsorship and merchandising but we'll see, dude. 101. 101. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to see what happens with uh, McLaren, obviously, being a big fan of them. Uh, but again, I'm guessing Red Bull's going to show up looking strong. Mercedes is going to take a step forward. Aston's looking good. But if McLaren can show up with a big <laughs> upgrade package and, and, and shoot up the midfield a little bit, maybe fight yeah. with Alpine and push towards the top, that would be incredible. Um, yeah. I have hope. I have hope. I haven't lost hope yet. But Random question. Yes. I saw this on the Instagram and the Reddit uh, that someone thinks that Mercedes brought George over too early yeah. uh, and that George Russell uh, was should have been like the replacement for for uh, Sweet Lewis. Yep. Like they, they were basically drawing attention to how Valtteri was the perfect teammate for Lewis 100%. and yep. how Checo is pretty much the perfect teammate for Max. Yep. Um, I don't know if that's still the case, but uh, yep. that was kind of the deal there. And what do you think about that? Cause George is very good at driving. Yes. Uh, he's he, as much as I hate saying it, but he's very <laughs> good at it. And I, 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 they, they, they had good points. It's yes. kind of interesting to see that. Uh, and yeah. we can't have someone pressing our number one guy. We have to have someone supporting our number one guy. 100%. Um, I think what are your I, thoughts on that? I agree with that in, in, in most ways where, you know, Valtteri was never going to fully 
contend against Lewis for that number one spot to go after the championship. Championships become a lot easier to win when you have a clear number one and then that number two is supporting the fight. Uh, Strategically, qualifying well, fighting, being able to give them strategy advantages during races where you need to have two cars at the front. Valtteri did that so well. He won his share. He he qualified well, but he never was going to be a contender for the world championship compared to Lewis. Now, I think with you bring in, you know, the youth and the tenacity, the determination, everything that that George has, it does throw a wrench into the system that you previously had for the last eight to nine years. So I I don't know if it's going to ever really fully turn into a a Nico Lewis situation where I think people think they're going to fight each other. I think Lewis is way more uh, mature now and he's, he's won so much that, it's it changes the dynamic. I think he's also down to be a bit more of a mentor towards George to leave the team in good hands when he leaves. That's obviously a massive, you know, yeah. uh, just who knows prediction. Don't know if that's real or not. But yeah, I agree. I think I think it does change things when you know you have two drivers fully competing and not one in that number one spot. So, yeah. do you think they were trying to push Lewis out? I don't think so. I don't think no. they want... I mean, maybe eventually... They just didn't realize how good he was in this car. Yeah, and I think it might be a money thing eventually. Lewis will be is so expensive that yeah. if, if you can find someone who then can support George being the number one, then you try to replicate that same dynamic that you had with Lewis and then put your resources and your time towards George being your number one down the line. Um, yeah. I don't know. Huh. But yeah. Interesting. So All yeah. Right. So then we got Baku. Let's go south. Yep. And then we go down to Miami the week after that, hopefully. Emphasis on down. If you saw photos <laughs> this week, uh, the track is underwater right now. Dude, like knee-high water. Seb was it's right. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see what happens there. But uh, There's yeah. a huge storm down there. And like everyone was asking me when I was down there, like, did you get hit by this water or this rain? I was like, I mean, it canceled one of my rounds on Thursday, but it wasn't crazy. Yeah. Like for us, we had some wind and high tide and – uh, but it wasn't cause we live <clears throat> on in like the bayous. So yeah. when there's a big storm, it will push the Gulf water in and then the bayous raise. And then we had high tide. And I mean, the yeah. water was like six inches, four inches off the bottom of the dock. It was Damn. that high. It, it was crazy. And normally it's like a, like a couple feet yeah. down below. Uh, but you look at these pictures of the, of the crew. Um, and I mean, it is, it, it's like underwater, underwater. Yeah, it, we'll see it, how which, it goes. Which is concerning too, because if it gets if it gets under the water, like my thought is, if it gets under the soil, under the track, that's going to create cracks in the track, like how yeah. how we have it in Colorado. Yeah. The water gets under there, it freezes, it expands, and it breaks the concrete. I wonder if this is going to be a similar issue. Yeah, you know, because with, with all that new concrete laid, getting from last that year, much water out of the man. area is going to be difficult. So, we'll see how that goes. Not sure. Uh, keep a keep a close eye on Miami. Uh, but let's get into it. We're there. Let's hear our Mazzy. We're at our Mazzy. You had a great week, and I'm excited to hear about our Mazzy. Uh, Brent, tell the good people what is our Mazzy this week. Don't get mad at me, everybody. Please, <laughs> just don't get mad. All right. It's, there's there's thought in this. The Mazzy goes to Formula One in general <laughs> for just being so fucking exclusive. It's so frustratingly yeah. expensive and exclusive that we can't have access to it. And then yeah. when you go to the, the two new American races, it is it seems like it's literally just a huge money grab. We went from almost losing our only American Grand Prix at uh, at, at uh, Circuit of the Americas in Austin to having three in our country in one in one season. Yep. And Miami and uh, Vegas are so exclusive. Yeah. They're so expensive, and and it's just ruling everyone out. And half the people that are going. Don't even give a shit about Formula One racing. Yes. They just want to be seen there. They yes. just want to have a like a. It's like going to the Super Bowl, yeah. you know. And it's just so frustrating. Like maybe they should have a. a, a this will never happen. Maybe they they should have a lottery yeah. for just regular ass people yeah. to enter in. And there's like a thousand tickets that are like three hundred bucks for a paddock even, pass or, yeah, or something totally. like that. You know. I, it's, I totally agree with you. I don't think people are mad at that. I think that's a huge criticism of Formula One. One, two parts. This has always been a part of Formula One. 
the, yeah, this exclusivity, fair. this inaccessibility, in, in a certain way. I, I, you know, it's Monaco always, is a great example of 100%. it. One hundred percent. But yeah. there also has been uh, this massive jump in inaccessibility because of America. Because yeah. America yeah. is now on board with F one, it has skyrocketed the exclusivity, the inaccessibility for a lot of the average fan, new or not. It yeah. still sucks because yeah. it's just pricing out everyone who just like a guy who wants to go see a race. You yeah. can't. And that's frustrating. So I agree. It's that's like a good when, one. when we were talking about getting uh, seats at in Vegas and yeah. my neighbor was like, yeah, my, my friend has a, a booth they're getting. It's 350,000. It's not bad. <laughs> Only seven grand each. Yeah. I'm like, it's not bad. Excuse me. Only yeah. seven. Only. Oh, cool. Only yeah. 7,000 each. That's yeah. that, dope. I could buy a, a, a used BMW for yeah. less than seven thousand dollars right now, and you will, uh, and, and drive it, it for another six years, and, you'll and I do probably it. will. You'll yeah. do it. Uh, so so to, to me, it's just it's frustrating, it, and I don't know how to fix it. Yeah, I don't have any options other than like a you know uh, like a lottery or something like that. But it, 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 I feel like they're or at least maybe Saturday, like give us yeah. cheap access on Saturday or something yeah. like that. But it's it's all corporate now, and, and you know it is what it is. That they, they got to make that money. Look. Liberty Media bought Formula One for four billion dollars. Just got offered twenty billion dollars to Damn. buy it, and they said no thanks. No thanks. That's how much profit it's, they know that they're going to be making in these next ten years. It's going well. It's insane. So, so. Uh, it goes to you, F one. Cool it out. You did. I want to make. I want to come, or just get me press passes, and then I'll never. Fucking yeah, there you go. Again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I don't have to sneak into places. <laughs> yeah. So. Although sneaking in is pretty fun. It uh, is fun. Just ask Nick about what we did. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. But anyway, that's our episode. Thanks everybody. Thanks everybody for listening. We appreciate you on social media. Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, uh, everywhere you can find us. Uh, hop in our discord check out our merch uh we love you guys from the bottom of our hearts we appreciate you guys listening tell your friends uh thank you so much for for hanging with us and and learning about f1 enjoying f1 enjoying just motorsport in general so truly we really appreciate it uh hope you guys enjoyed it i'm glad you're alive brent i'm glad you made it God, me too i i wanted to get in one of those cars so bad yeah. so. just trying to wiggle my way in there yeah of course so <laughs> All right, we'll be back next week. We have one more off week, and then yep. we are in Azerbaijan. So stick with us one more week, and then we're back to uh, to a race week. So we'll see you soon. Be good to each other. Brand, wear your seatbelts. Wear your seatbelts. Wear your seatbelts. Have a good week, everyone. Safe. We'll see drive you soon. Safe. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.